taking off my pants right now. Perfect. You know. Mine are already off. <laughs> well, and today anyway. Uh, howdy folks, today uh, we're doing another uh, wild game cooking edition. It's actually going to be venison backstraps. Um, this is going to be one take, so I can't guarantee how it's going to come out. Venison backstraps uh, and quail eggs. And it'll be a nice little, almost like a more of an appetizer than a meal, but it's something I like to do and uh, happy to share it with you. And what I'm even more psyched about is the first time I've had two guys, Barracuda from Full Tang Bushcraft and GC, who uh, GC, you probably haven't heard of him, but uh, he, they call him Golf Club and he's actually just finishing up a tour from what, whatever formerly Scandinavia was. Uh, but anyway, uh, and I'm happy to have these two guys with me, so, uh, OGC, come on over here, and, uh, hey, Bear. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you got your pants on, brother? Oh. Put them on right now. <laughs> All right. Everybody. Put on my pants. Just making sure my pants are on before I come in here to do this with you guys. No pun intended. <laughs> the pun is definitely intended. But this is, you all know Barracuda from uh, Full Tang Bushcraft, and you got a couple, it's actually, you've got a political career too, what we got to talk about. They call me the Barracuda. My name is Barrett Kudelski, and I am the chief instructor at FullTangBushcraft.com, and we are number one, we're number one worldwide and solar system wide. <laughs> number one. Nobody's got that down. Nobody. Yeah. So... You want to tell us a little bit about your uh, your endeavors? Or... <sighs> no, actually, I'd rather not. <laughs> it's still classified. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he's going to be he's going to be running. You'll see him uh, running for political office here, probably in the next couple of years. Uh, trouble man for trouble times, I guess is the best I can say. <laughs> well, what I would say is that <laughs> I've got a vision for the future, and my vision it's 2020. So I'm hoping in the year 2020, I can count on you people to. Vote for me, because my vision, 2020, in the year 2020. Actually, makes sense. Numerolog numerologically. I don't feel like I nailed that right there, but, you know, I'm working towards it. I feel pretty good about it, yeah. We definitely get a career in politics. And cooking. <laughs> so And definitely cooking. Anyway, so I'm going to be preparing this. Uh, I'm going to be shooting from the hip tonight, no pun intended. And I'm uh, going to make this meal up and see how it goes. So, all right. <laughs> awesome. All right, so let's get this show on the road. Uh, first of all, we're gonna heat up the old, the old cast iron fry pan with some butter, and I'm gonna uh, cut up the uh, dice up the onion and garlic. Actually, probably press the garlic, caramelize that, set it aside, cook the venison. Uh, and you'll see as the process goes on, but uh, this is actually a really good uh, flavor combination for some reason, but anyway. So as my good buddy Tom over at Migrating Moose actually Show me how to the, the right way to uh, dice an onion. Basically, we just want to get these onions and garlic caramelized. Once we get our orange onions and garlic caramelized, I'm actually going to put them in a bowl and uh, hook, them in the, hook them into play later. And now we're going to um, get the venison cooking, our back straps. Better with cast iron, I don't grab onto it, but it's awesome. 
Well, it took me 40 years to figure it out, but the transfers, that means transfer into your hand as well as the food you're cooking. So, take our back straps. And these are actually uh, cut into medallions. And oh, uh, the trick with venison is cook it low and slow with pretty much by itself because if you put salt in venison or any other seasoning it just takes it actually takes away the flavor and it actually kind of ruins it so with venison i just cook it on its own by itself and then i put the seasonings in later on top to another uh, uh, vehicle if you will the reason you, you don't add salt to venison is because it's so lean uh, it, it, you know, there's literally no fat on this. Whereas, like, you can put salt, you know, into pretty much any other steak or red meat that you cook. But salt is good on venison after it's cooked. Um, it's pretty much well, the only way I can explain it. If you put salt in venison, it actually sucks the moisture out of the meat. It leaves it with a flat taste, I guess, if you will. Uh, because it's so lean. Can you grab the Gavorsi in it? Oh, yeah. So now we've got our medallions cooked. We're going to actually almost run along, but I'm going to set it, set them aside, and they'll finish cooking to the to the extent that I want them to. Okay, so what I'm going to do now for safety's sake, shut the flame off, put in my Gavorsi a little bit. That mixing around. Turn the flame back on. Uh, and again, you know, this isn't a uh, sensational video, but a little more for this, actually. Take our whisk, get it gelled in. It smells delicious, by the way. A little bit more flour. Okay, so now we're setting it on for a couple of minutes. We're going to take a little bit of uh, heavy cream and a, a glug, if you will, a tablespoon, heavy tablespoon, not a lot. Uh, and don't put in too much. What you do is you put it in and just get it going around. A little bit more. A little bit more than that. Again, we're on low heat, so we're not, you know, we're not going to... Uh, we're not in any danger. And the thing is, you can always put more in, but you can't take anything out. So the, the trick is, you're looking for a, you know a nice, nice sauce, if you will. So I realized that I have not a sauce yet, but it's close. All right, that's about the uh, consistency we're looking for right there. Perfect. And like I said, there's no science to it. You just get it to where you think it looks good. I think I probably put a eh, three quarters of a cup of cream in on top of the uh, uh, Cavorcia and the uh, butter. So while we get this cooking, we get our sauce cooking on low. We're going to put in a little bit of pepper. A 
a little bit of kick. And I'm going to throw in some uh, Asiago Romano Parmesan cheese. And we're going to let that melt. I'm going to give that a second to come together. Oh, good boy. Cheese and pepper. My God, what a difference. And now, uh, only for presentation's sake, am I going to take my quail eggs and I'm going to cook them in my little one egg wonder um, just for presentation sake. I could have cooked them in the cast iron. So the reason we use quail eggs is just because the taste is phenomenal. Um, it gives a great presentation but the taste of a quail egg compared to any other egg is just has a unique sense. So uh, I'm going to cook them in the uh, little one egg wonder because I got my uh, sauce over there in the cast iron fry pan. That's setting up. And these little guys are absolutely delicious. I mean, they're just absolutely delicious. And I cannot emphasize on uh, if you've never tried one, you got to. And I'm a very uh, uncoordinated person, and if I can crack a quail egg, you can. So we're going to cook that. Uh, cook a couple of them and then we'll get on to the next step. Now the, another trick that I like to do is I put on my uh, little bit of paprika before I flip the egg. Plate these bad boys up. Get our uh, back strap, little onion on top. Oh, yeah. Onion and garlic. Can't have enough onion and garlic. And I like a good uh, portion of sauce on top of that. I actually just drown it. And don't forget our cheese is in here. Then throw the egg on top. And you get yourself a little venison quail egg uh, appetizer, if you will. I don't even know what I call this thing. Other well, so this is the uh, uh, final product. And uh, the reason you, you want to use quail egg is because it gives you, if you want to do small dishes like uh, sliders or tacos or um, venison medallions, a quail egg is a perfect serving size. You get the whole egg on one serving. So if you're doing three sliders or three tenderloins, you have three eggs. And it just makes the uh, presentation better. The taste is phenomenal. And uh, I have to give my wife credit for this because she's the one that turned me on to quail eggs. I'd never had them. I've eaten quail my whole life, but I never actually had a quail egg until I met my wife. So, uh, as always, don't be, uh, and just, I'm sure you've all seen them, but that is what quail eggs actually look like. Even the, the uh, eggs themselves look uh, pretty, pretty cool, to be honest with you. They look like uh, marble or something, but a lot of fun. Uh, fun to cook with, and uh, if you haven't tried them, I suggest you do try them. And this is just a, another classic example of a man should listen to his wife in the first place. So, hope you enjoyed. Thank you.